all the way to verse 14 thereabout. Luke chapter 2 from verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Verse 2. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. Verse 4. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Verse 6. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Verse 8. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were so afraid. Verse 10. For unto you is born this day in the city of David the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Verse 12. Hey! And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, verse 14. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise so shall it be for all of us in Jesus precious name. Give the Lord another clap of hand as you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very, very quickly we are going to be looking at some instruction on the subject of the season of Christ's birth. I don't know whether to title this as part two because, well, let me call yesterday's own the introduction. So, the season of Christ's birth. The ICT can make that of the Chris, Christmas Eve or the carol to be introduction. Today we shall understand the season that we are in, understanding the season of Christ's birth and also we shall understand what was born at Christ's birth. There are three things I want to say or four by way of introduction that you know already. Number one, that the celebration of the birth of Christ is the foremost celebration in the history of the world. Foremost. Is the celebration. That ranks number one. In the history of the world. If you go to non-Christian worlds today. To the Middle East. Somewhere like. Dubai. You go to Singapore and so on. You will see the streets and the whole place. Alive. With light. Even those who don't know God at all. So number two, the season of Christ's birth is the season of great joy and celebration. Spiritually, physically, otherwise, is a season that is characterized with great joy and celebration. When the Angels descended and talked about joy to the world and peace and goodwill to men and so forth. That statement still rings throughout the earth today. When the season is around the corner, there is palpable joy. There is palpable celebration. I remember when we were children, it was a season to look forward to in joy and excitement. And when the day of Christmas is ending, the ch little child is getting sad. That this day he thought that the day will continue permanently. 
Thirdly, it is the season of hope and expectation. For one reason or the other, there is hope, there is expectation. Uh, for, for the little child, he's expecting new clothes, he's expecting new shoes, he's expecting Christmas food. <laughs> Hallelujah. We happened to be on the road yesterday and the, the markets were all alive. People were bending down looking for shoes and looking for cloth. Tailors are under pressure because they must deliver before 12 midnight. <laughs> the greatest quarrel of people with Taylor is during Christmas period. He said, you have performed again. Taylor, you have performed again. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a season of great hope and expectation. Fourthly, it is the season of love and unification. It happens just naturally. We saw how the Eastern astrologers literally got united with the Jewish shepherds in receiving the same news, the same revelation of the birth of Jesus. We know of the giving and receiving of gifts as, at Christmas. In the village in those days, neighbors sent food to each other. I, I don't know how many of you were in the village at all for any reason. Or, or in the, or, I mean, the, 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 the sending of food is natural. Enemies might send food to each other during Christmas, even though some may suspect the food. <laughs> I may not touch it, but it is sent all the way down. So there is, there is something that happens around that season that just makes it so. And these things are spiritual. Now, let me say three other things beyond what I just said. What does God display. What did God display at Christmas? Number one, Christmas season represents the display. The season of the highest display of the love of God. That was why I believe that is why there is that spirit of love during the Christmas season. John chapter 3 verse 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The love of God, the love of God for the world is a prime reason for Christmas. It is it's a display of unbelievable love. Is a display of unbelievable, unimaginable love. Loving people who didn't love you. Loving people who don't care for you. Loving people who disobey you, who rebel against you. Number two, it represents the season of the highest display of the wisdom of God. The highest display of the wisdom of God. Why is it the highest display of the wisdom of God? The Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24 and in verse 30 that Christ is both the wisdom of God and the power of God. The man of God Billy Graham said what God did at Christmas or what God did in the birth of Jesus it's like when a man wants to speak to ants and he realized that the ants could not understand him. There is no way he can talk to the ants to understand. Whatever he says means nothing to the ants. So he decided to become an ant so that he can communicate with the ants in the language they can understand. 
That was what God did. He is divinity, we are humanity. He is immortal, we are mortal. He is infinite, we are finite. He is heavenly, we are earthly. He is invisible, we are visible. He is eternal, we are temporal. So how can we, how can me and these people communicate with each other? How can I speak to them? How will, they will understand? The only thing to do is to become them. So, the son of God, divinity became humanized. So humanity can become divinized. The son of God became the son of man. So that sons of men can have a ladder that can make them become sons of God. It is the highest display of the wisdom of God. Number three, the season of Christmas. The Christmas the, now, I want you to call it the season of Christ's birth. The, the season of Christ's birth is the season of the highest display of the might of God. The highest display of the might of God. God manifested power. He manifested might. Might. For Christ to be born. How is that so? First of all. And I'm sure you will not be tired of me describing how I like to describe this. The Bible says, the heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. So how long is his leg? He sits in heaven. And he puts his leg on the cycle of the earth. What a long leg. He say, you are the apple of his eye. You and you and you and you and you and me. We are all the apple of his eye. So how big is the eye? How about the head that carries the eye? And the body that carries the head? How sizable is God? And yet that God who cannot be measured became measurable man. If an ant Swallowed up an elephant. It is nothing compared with what I am talking about. If the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans became emptied into a Coke bottle and that possibility exists, it's not as massive as what I am talking about. If the Mount Everest and the Kilimanjaro and all the mountains of the earth became dust entered into dust is not comparable with God the son becoming the son of man that is immeasurable power unbelievable power as if a toy car swallowed a train It is the demonstration of might. So much might until he carried the blood that was not tainted with human iniquity. That was how he could cleanse the world with his blood. How Mary carried the pregnancy and the pregnancy of Mary did not get contaminated with the human blood of Mary. Mary carried a pregnancy. No, the pregnancy carried Mary. Somebody say amen. amen. So we are face to face. The highest measure.
measure of love, the highest measure of wisdom, the highest measure of might. And if God can do that, what can God not do? Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. This kind of day where the birth of Christ is celebrated and the day in which the death and resurrection of Christ are celebrated, those two days are the pillars, the reason for Christianity. If they didn't exist, we have nothing to believe in. If he was born like a normal human being, he could have died like a normal human being, but his death couldn't hold him. Because he wasn't born normally, he couldn't die normally. Somebody say a loud amen. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, I thank you today for the birth of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, I connect with the love and the wisdom and the might that represents that love, represents that birth. Thank you, Master, in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord the praise as you take your seat. Very, very quickly. It was not the birth of Christ that is the most important thing, but what was born when Christ was born. That is what we want to look at right now. So we can understand fully what was born when Christ was born. Number one, is God's personality. God's personality. The personality of God was born. God himself was born. In John chapter 1 and in verse 1 all the way to verse 5. The Bible said in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. That's Christ. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. When Christ was born, it was God that was born. The meaning of that is when you accept Jesus Christ into your life, you have accepted the personality of God in your life. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you. First John chapter 4 verse 4. And he that is in the world, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God's personality what Christ represent. Number two. Somebody say, can God be born? We are talking about the incarnation. When God stepped out of eternity into the earth. The human mind can't understand it. That is why some struggle with it. But the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Number two is God's presence. When Christ was born, that personality that was born was God and tabernacle that missed men, God's presence. That was why his name was called Emmanuel or he's called Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew chapter 1 verse 22 to 23. Matthew chapter 1 verse 22 to verse 23. The Bible says, now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. amen. Say Lord, thank you for your presence in my life with my life so on a day like this nairobi kenya god bless you all there in nairobi on a day like this 
we are celebrating the presence of God with us. The feelable, the tangible, palpable presence of God. Meaning of this is, as a child of God, when you carry Christ in you, anywhere you step in, people should feel God. They should experience God. They should encounter God. Your movement is the movement of his presence. Am I communicating at all? People should feel God. They should experience God. They should encounter God. When they look at you, something about you reminds them about God. Because Christ is God with us. Lift your right hand and say, Father, let your presence overwhelm my life. Let your presence be real in my life. Be real through my life. Let people feel you when they come around me. Let people feel you when they come around me. You believe that? Say a loud amen. amen. What was born? Number three, God's purpose. God's purpose. The birth of Christ was the birth of the purpose of God. What purpose was that? The purpose of reconciling man back to God. The purpose of restoring the glory of God back to man. The purpose of reconciling man back to God. The purpose of restoring the image and glory of God back to man. In John chapter 18, verse 37. John chapter 18, verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Are you then a king? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world. I was born for a purpose. First John chapter 3, verse 8. First John chapter 3, verse 8. The Bible said, he that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Purpose. The birth of Jesus Christ was the birth of purpose. There is nobody connected to Christ that is designed to be purposeless. There is nobody connected... If Christ is born in your life, it means that your life is, is targeted at a purpose. It's the birth of God's purpose. It's the birth of God's plan. It's the birth of God's program. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. It says, the B part says, Whom we preach, one in every man. All right, all right. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Somebody say a loud amen. Say God's personality. Say it after me. Say God's personality. God's personality. God's presence. God's purpose are finding expression in my life today through Christ. God's personality, God's presence, God's purpose, they are finding expression through my life today through Jesus Christ. What was born when Christ was born, number four, is God's promise or prophecy. The promise of God and prophecy was born. It wasn't just that Christ was born, but promise was born. Prophecy was born. Somebody say loud, Amen. During the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, God gave a word to the serpent in Genesis chapter 3 and in verse 15. Genesis 3 and in verse 15, He said, And I will put enmity. Between you and the woman. And between your seed. And her seed. He shall bruise your head. And you shall bruise his heel. Serpent. Satan the devil. For what you have done. I am going to bring a seed. Out of the woman. That shall crush your head. 
And in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to 5, the Bible explains that. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, that seed of a woman, made of the woman, made of a woman. You ran too fast. He sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. That prophecy lasted for thousands of years. But when Christ was born, it was prophecy that was born. It was promise that was born. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Isaiah prophesied it thousands of years. Until Christ was born. And prophecy was born. I am here to announce to somebody. If there is any prophecy hanging on your life. Any promise of God. That is yet to be fulfilled in your life. On this occasion of the celebration. Of the birth of the Christ. The promise shall be realized. The prophecy shall be realized. The promise shall be realized. The prophecy shall be realized. If you are saying amen. Shout the loudest amen. Take your seat and look at someone by your side and tell them, get ready. Prophecy is about to be born in your life. The promise of God is about to be born in your life. Is somebody getting anything here? Number five is God's power and possibility. I have already explained this. God's power and possibility was born when Christ was born. God's power, God's possibility. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Government is power. Government is authority. When Christ was born, authority was born. Power was born. Possibility was born. Somebody say a loud amen. That is... The power that gave birth to him in the first place. And then the power that turned sons of men into sons of God. Sons and daughters of men into sons and daughters of God. John chapter 1 verse 12. But as many as believed him, to them he gave power to become. As many as received him, as many as received Jesus into their lives, to them gave he power. Power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name 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 to them that believe in his name he gave them power that's the kind of power that will turn a murderer to a deliverer that will turn a Moses to a deliverer that will turn a, a Saul of Tarsus to a Paul the Apostle Am I communicating at all? The kind of power that will turn a, a, a fragile vegetable person into a lion, a roaring lion. The kind of power, the kind of power. Am I communicating at all? When I grew up as a young man, I was a bit timid. Secondary school, I remember trying to face a crowd or to address people. I was a bit timid. Until Christ stepped in. And even the devil is aware today. That if we see each other face to face. He will be on the run. One day I told my wife. I said why don't we just fight, catch the devil at once. And just finish this thing at once. I told her one. I said instead of all this back and forth. We can find the devil at once. And just finish this thing at once. <laughs> I mean, I mean that, 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 is, that, that is as raw as it can be. That's the power of God. The power of God. The power of God. The, the, the power of God that turns a mortal man into a terror to the devil. 
I see that power coming to walk into so in someone's life here today. I see that power at work in someone's life here today. I see that power at work in someone's life here today. If you believe that, shout the loudest amen. The power of God is, it was the best, please take your seat, of God's possibility. I don't know what is, how your life is today. And what, and what to desire to become in God. That power is changing that life right now. Number six, it was the birth of God's principle. God's principle. What's the meaning of that? God's, God's standard for life. God's way of doing things. God's character. That was what was born when Christ was born. When he said in John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. That was what he meant. I came to show people how to live. God's way of doing things. God's standard for life. God's reality. That's why the Bible call him the auto and the finisher of our faith. Auto and finisher. And that's why he's the head coach. He takes the lead, we follow. Take the lead, oh Lord, I'll follow you. You remember the song? God's way of doing things. So when Christ is born in our lives, we, we, we quit the worldly way of doing things, the crooked way of doing things, the hateful way of doing things, the bitter way of doing things. It's God's principle. Number seven is the birth of God's provision. God's provision. Christ is the embodiment of everything God has to offer man. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. John chapter 3 verse 16. With Christ came, came salvation from sin. Deliverance from the devil. Healing from affliction. Deliverance from scarcity and shortage. Rescue from premature death. The birth of Christ is the birth, was the birth of everything God has to offer man. In Romans chapter 8 verse 32. Romans 8 32. He that spared not his own son. But delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him. Also freely give us all things. Anything. If he couldn't hold back his son. There is nothing he will hold back from us. Because nothing is more valuable than his son. Healing is not more valuable. Deliverance is not more valuable. Supernatural supply is not more valuable. Longevity, fulfilling your days is not more valuable. If he could not hold back his son, there is nothing he will hold back from us. Right now, I announce to somebody, anything that is in Christ, that is needed by your life, at this occasion, I decree, receive right now. You are in need of freedom from an addiction. You are in need of deliverance from sin. You are in need of healing from a bodily sickness and affliction. Or pain or a cancer. You are in need of deliverance from ancestral generational curses. Or the plague of premature death. All the demons of wretchedness and empty handedness. Today, by the anointing, by the power, by the grace that brought, that brought Jesus to be born and gave himself to die for us, I declare what you are trusting God for is your Christmas gift right now. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Finally, number eight. Before we begin to draw the conclusion. What was born. 
when Christ was born, God's peace, the peace of God that passes understanding. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. To corroborate that, the angel spoke about that in Luke chapter 2 and in verse 13 and verse 14. In Luke chapter 2, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say the loud most amen. Say amen at the top of your voice. Look at your neighbor. Say peace. I don't know who is in any form of crisis here today. Your mind is troubled. I speak peace. I speak peace. I speak peace. Trouble in the mind, trouble in the body, trouble in the system. Trouble anywhere around you. I speak peace now. I speak peace to communities that are troubled right now. Troubled with the human wickedness and demonic agents. Receive peace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Very, very quickly. Those things were born. The personality of God, the presence of God, the purpose, the promise, and prophecy, the power, the possibility, the principle, the provision, the peace of God. In conclusion, this morning, yesterday we said that the birth of Christ came with revelation. The light shone upon them. I want us to look at certain things light we receive from the birth of Christ. Light that will help our lives. Lives that will help our, light that will help our faith. Light that will help our character. Number one. The plan of God will come to pass no matter how long it takes the plan purpose promise of God will come to pass no matter how long it takes God spoke to Adam about the seed of the woman Isaiah prophesied that a son will be born. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all of them. Micah talked about Bethlehem Ephrata. Out of you shall be born one that shall come. All of them prophesied. And it, it was appearing like it may not come to pass. Or maybe on Lucas, oh, a hundred years ago we heard somebody said that. One thousand years ago, the plan of God, the purpose of God, the promise of God, will come to pass no matter how long it takes. It is within God's plan that our brother, talented pilot, fighter pilot, should reach the peak of his career. Yet, he marked time on the same rank for nine years. You, you heard this illustration. Somebody is in form one, or as it is today, JS1, and then SS1. You remain in that SS1 or form four. This person came from JS1 to JS2 to JS3 to, J to SS1, form four, met you there, left you there, and kept going. All juniors became senior. How 
do you pay them respect and courtesy and salute? And how do, what do you do? How do you do that? How do you cope? Especially if they make one of them to become your superior. But you remain there. One of those days he sent a very strong letter. I said I have sacrificed for this force. I almost lost my life in a crash. And yet I cannot be left like this. But it came to pass. It took nine years but it came to pass. Let that testimony encourage somebody this morning. Don't give up. Never ever give up. It doesn't matter how long it has taken. If God has scheduled it, if God has promised it, and if the word of God has covered it, it must come to pass. I announce to somebody here today, every season of delay in your life, everything that is appearing like it will not happen again in your life, I declare in this season, it shall happen. I announce to somebody, your healing is about to be made manifest. Your deliverance is about to be made manifest. Marital settlement is about to happen for you. Your fruit of the womb is about to be released. That devil that could not stop Jesus from being born. When there was no meeting of man and woman at all. That devil is helpless against that spirit of barrenness. In the name of Jesus. Shout the loudest amen, take your seat. What light do we receive, number two? That the love of God will overcome every obstacle, be it human or demonic. Every obstacle, the love of God. The love of God for man made him to overcome everything. The laws of biology could not stop Jesus from being born. Contrary to the laws of reproductive biology. The love of God will overcome. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Was that Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 3, 31 verse 3? And with my loving kindness have I drawn you. Only located there. The Lord has appeared unto me of old, saying, Yeah, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. The love I have for you is a love that I don't change my mind about. Therefore, with my loving kindness have I drawn you. When the devil wanted to sink you, I drew you. When the devil wanted you to perish, I drew you. He wanted you to die before your time. I drew you. He wanted you to, to be a victim. I drew you. Ay, 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 ay. And you shall be drawn. Many of us today are where we are despite the bitterness of people. How many of you are here today? You understand what I'm talking about? There are people who they are so bitter that you are where you are and you are who you are. In fact, that you are still alive is a pain to some people. That you are looking the way you are looking and not wretched and not haggard. And you are not begging, you are not borrowing from them. You didn't go and ask them for, for money. It is paining them. And this thing didn't happen from here. It was done from there. Do you understand what I'm talking about? No man taketh this honor upon himself. Except he that is called. If bad look will kill persons, many people would have died since. You pass the eye you. You greeted the three away their face. 
they behave that they didn't see you. Lift your hands, say, Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. That is the reason why I'm where I am. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy that is taking me where you are taking me to. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. I announce to someone here today the love of God and the mercy of God will take you where the enemy will literally kill themselves. Say it louder, amen. Say it louder, believers, amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Let me say this, very, very important. Are you ready? Number three, at the appointed time, God uses everything to accomplish his purpose. When the time is ripe, God uses everything to accomplish his purpose. He uses human beings, uses systems, and he can even use devils and their agents at times <laughs> without their notice. When Jesus was being crucified, the purpose of God was being fulfilled. Using the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the demons that were pushing them without their notice. That God was sending his son to die for the sins of the world. Am I communicating? For all things still work together for good. To them that love God. Even to them that are they called. According to his purpose. They may try to be working it against you. Or against God. But God turns it around. And uses it in your favor. Because nobody can block the wind. When you block it. You are only making more ways. Listen and hear this. Listen, just take your seat. The emperor, the Roman emperor, Caesar Augustus, made a decree that everybody should go to their village to be counted. That was the only thing that moved Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. Where it was prophesied that Christ should be born. For prophecy to come to pass, the leader of the, of the empire need to make a decree. That decree could have come another time, before or after, but it had to happen at that time. Because thou Bethlehem Ephrata, even though thou art the least of the cities of Judah, out of you shall come he shall be, that shall be the governor of my people. It was prophesied. And because it was prophesied, it must be realized. And systems must move. People must move. Individuals must move. Institutions must move for the prophecy to come to pass. I don't know who is here today. I see systems moving. I see institutions moving. I see authorities moving. I see powers moving. I see principalities moving. I see demons moving to ensure that the purpose of God for your life be fulfilled, for prophecy to be fulfilled. Shout the loudest. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say when it is time. God will use everything to work in your favor. Even those that were working against you, God will use them to work in your favor when it is time. And I 
am here to announce to someone I preach like this because it is time for something good to happen. It is time for a particular prophecy to be fulfilled in your life. It is time for a particular purpose of God to be fulfilled in your life. And because it is time, everything is moving in your favor to bring to pass. Hallelujah. Don't over empower the devil. He can become an instrument soon. He can become a tool to facilitate something. Don't over praise that devil. Somebody say loud amen. Somebody say loud amen. Somebody shout the loud most amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. And then I say two more things. On a more sober note. And then we shall be true. Light or lesson or rev light number four. The highest form of living is giving. That is what we learned from the birth of Jesus Christ. That the highest form of living is giving. Most human beings celebrate what they get. But Jesus came to celebrate what he would give. Until you are actively giving, you are not actively living. For God so loved the world that he gave. Until you are actively giving. You are not actively living. We give carbon dioxide out to take in oxygen. We give out waste material in the toilet before we can eat food. Keep eating without giving out. It is dying without knowing. When was the last time you gave? You gave of your life. You gave of your time. You gave of your resources. When was the last time you gave? There are many people who are struggling to receive without releasing. I told my wife, Dr. Mrs. Becky and Angel, the other day I said, what we experienced at the wedding, because we had people commenting from all over the world. People reaching us from everywhere. Oh, this wedding, oh, they, somebody said the last time he experienced something like that was like the wedding that happened in, in the royal family in England and so on. All manner of comments. I told her, I said, commitment to God will make God to bring you honor. But beyond that, when you sow seeds of honor, you can reap harvest of multiplied honor. Every devil knows that everyone that God has placed ahead of us. Pastor Pastor W.F. Kumui, God's servant, Bishop David Oyeripo, our father in the Lord. Heavy, heavy, heavy honor. Both in their presence, in their absence. And everyone that we, 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 we can, we will. And we continuously do so. When time comes, the Lord said, reap honor. Just reap. That the president of a country will send his first son and his wife. Say, go and represent me at this occasion. I cannot be there because I have a meeting in America. Plenty like that. Deputy Minister of Education in Ghana was coming and at the airport, there was um, a particular flight detail that happened. He stopped at the airport and sent the bishop to come and represent him from everywhere. People are struggling for what to receive, but they never think about what to give. Giving, giving, giving. The other day, when the village now this this occasion finished on Sunday, and by Sunday evening we're already on the crusade field. Already on the crusade ground. Healing Sunday evening, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday we are back here. 
And then one of our pastors from Kano, he said, when he saw me preaching again at the carol night, he said, what kind of challenge is this? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I went through, as we're in the village, I just decided to take a stroll through the village pathways. The, you know, I, that, the, 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 the scenario, the villageness of the village. I wish we can see some of the pictures here. I met one of my we grew up together, a young man, in, 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 in those days. In the, you know, I knew him. I think we were in class together or something. The same age range. So he saw me. He ran to me. He said, are you the one I'm seeing like this? He said, I've been struggling to see you. I've been struggling to see you. And God brought you to meet me. So after we prayed, I said, what do you do? He says he does dry cleaning. Village level dry cleaning. Where he washes the cloth with his hand. And uses charcoal iron. My heart melted. Oh. Who are your kind of clients? He said, oh, he mentioned one person, mentioned two. He didn't mention more than three people. One of those clients is a retired teacher village teacher. How much will retired teacher pay for dry cleaning of his cloth in the village? I told the young man, I said, so what can we do? Now, this is what, what got me. He said, the other thing I do is farming of Tassava, but cow will not let it rest. Cow, cow, cow. Headsman cow. Headsman from hell. And that it is, he doesn't know what to do. I said, is there any way we can expand your business? He said, maybe buying of washing machine. I said, give me the list. Let's know what to do. My heart went out to upgrade his life. Anything I can do. From there I went, met another young man. He was doing shoes in the village. I said, what you are doing looks good. How do we expand this? He's looking for hundred and something thousand. That will expand the business. He's in the school in the polytechnic. But he's doing that on the holiday to support himself and his sister. Do you understand what I'm saying? From there, we were in the neighborhood where we grew up, Notubo, and I went there and the whole place was in the same dust and dry earth and brown roof and everything, everywhere. So young men hanging around, they all ran to where I was. People that I am 10 years older than are looking like my own father in, in age. What I so what do you do? Oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Okay, you know what? You help me identify as many people who have a trade to do and they don't have the means to do that trade. Let's see how they can be helped. Do you understand what I'm saying? As I didn't know what to do with myself in the midst of these people. Whether to remain there, I, don't, I didn't know what to do. The suffering was palpable. The need was like bottomless people. That's the village. That's, that's the village. That's my guy there. That's my guy right there. We drove through the roads on our way back, and I said. We have leaders in this country who are seeing these things. Am I communicating? I want us to come to the... I know you have a need, but please look beyond yourself. Just look a little beyond yourself and begin to sow the seeds from where you are. Make a difference in the life of somebody. The seed of your time. The seed of your counsel. The seed of your wisdom, the seed of your resources. It's not the size we are talking about now, it's the heart for it. Start 
start from where you are. I started from where I was giving. One woman came to me. She said, this my daughter is out of school. This like 25 years ago. And her husband is dead. And she's had to be out of school. Class 6 primary school. Government school. And I said, so what is the problem? I said, no school fees. How much? 600 naira. Then, I said, 600 naira. Be in touch with me for as long as this girl goes to school. She's back to, so it is not, see, 600 naira then. So that there, there may be needs today that is only just 1,500. Maybe that amount is what you are looking for to feed. I see somebody with it. When I went through the, the town the other day, one of the young men took me to his shop and he said, this is the shop you gave me money to set up. And it wasn't anything. I don't think maybe 200,000 or 250 or at the most 500 at that time. Jesus came to give. He gave and gave and gave until he gave his life. Let this lesson begin today. Let this giving begin today. The giving of your attention, your time, your resources, the, the message of the gospel, your giving, let it begin today. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. We learned that from Christ. And as I speak, the bishop called me yesterday from the Usuka area. That there was a headsman attack in the village of Ehamufu. Is there anybody from there who corroborate that? Is that correct? Is that correct? Ehamufu in Enugu state. In a particular community. Now, but why is nobody talking about it? Even the governor is not saying anything, sir. Is it in the news? It's in the news, sir. Okay. The bishop reported to that area newly. He said, excuse me, sir, pray for me. How should I report newly and this is my first assignment? He said, I don't know, know what to do with these children whose parents have been killed. He says he's crying out to authorities here and then nobody is answering him. Children lost their parents during Christmas. No Christmas celebration. No food. No Christmas cloth. They are looking for where to sleep. I almost went there from the village. I almost drove there. But I checked the time and went to be back here. There are people like that there. You might have relations there. And I'm going to be releasing some things to that bishop for that community. After this service, I'll be speaking with him. And I'm not saying that for anybody to clap. But I want us don't hear things and, and, and keep quiet. There was a, a disaster somewhere. Somebody called me and he said, some people came from a particular place and wiped people out in their village. And their challenge is that nobody is saying anything. So I spoke to the governor of that place. I said, I hear that something like this happened. The people say nobody has come yet. Please do something. I want us to arise and take responsibility. Let us begin to look beyond ourselves. And if you, if you know of people, friends, loved ones, even those you may not know that are in need, reach out. The highest form of living 
is given. You have not lived accurately until you are given actively. Number five, humility is the surest foundation for greatness. Surest foundation for greatness. Humility is the platform for authority. Surest foundation for greatness. Platform for true authority. Why do I say so? Jesus Christ agreed, number one, to become a man. That is humility. God, not become an angel, became a man. As God, he could be, he could be born in any family. He could, have, he could have decided to be born in the family of Pilate, in the family of Herod, in the family of the richest man in Bethlehem. But he agreed to be born in the house of to the family of a village carpenter. A village carpenter who was so poor that he had not enough money to offer a ram. A sacrifice for the dedication of the child. He bought two pigeons. The Old Testament prescribes that if a family is too poor to buy an animal, they can buy two beds for sacrifice. That was what... Joseph was able to buy two pigeons. Are you ready for this? Do you, remember, do you now know where he, he went to be born? In an animal's house. There was no room for him in the hotel. So he was born inside a manger. The king of the universe the prince of eternity, the one who manufactures silver and gold. Why are we raising shoulder? Where will pride carry us to? What do you have that you have not received? Are you hearing me here today? It, how many of you know that if the owners of the, anim, of, the, of the hotel, the inn, if they knew who was to be born, they would have cleared out the hall, all the rooms, sent out all the, what do you call it, customers? I said there is a, a VIP that is about to be born. But he came like that. And he was born like that. No wonder. There is no greater person than him in the whole of the universe. Are you looking for authority? Embrace humility. Are you looking for greatness? Embrace meekness. For God will always resist the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Many of us, God wants to do great things in our lives. But our pride is too much. Our arrogance is too much. He knows how he, we will talk down on people, look down on people, use and abuse people. So he said, just leave this girl there. Leave this boy there. It's too much like a peacock. Too much like an ostrich for me to do anything significant. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Anybody who is too big for God has become too small for their future. If you doubt me, ask Herod. When Herod made a speech and they said this is the voice of a God, not the voice of a man, God sent an angel and slapped Herod. He turned into worms. In Acts chapter 12, Verse 23 and 24. When Nebuchadnezzar beat his chest, 
and he said, this is this Babylon that I built with my power. God said, you, you think so? I will show you who owns Babylon. Man. He turned him into an animal. Sent him to the bush. Are you hearing me? Anybody you see in pride today is a man that has no future tomorrow. Write it down. Let them raise their shoulder. Let them be arrogant. Let them be moving. Can't greet people. Can't talk to people. They are too big, too important. Just give them a little time. For pride goeth before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. I know one of the proudest men that I have ever met in this country. Very arrogant. Pompous. In those days, you see him, you greet, he can't answer you back. He be, and I thought it was only peculiar to some people. It was universal. One man said, this man, he gave the man accommodation at a particular point in his life. As a doctor, he housed the man in his house. The man has become so important that when he greeted him, he, he behaved like he never met, he didn't know him. I was looking at him. I met that man somewhere in higher quarters. I think there was a function around the villa area. We're invited to, and we're there. My wife was there. Good morning. Morning, sir. No reply. My wife greeted, he answered. Ladies, no, no, no. Uh, well, I won't, I, won't, I won't go to the detail of the story. The man, uh, he has affinity in that direction. This man today is in abject, abject frustration. Total reduction. Complete humiliation. Somebody told him, told me, he said, hey, this man is almost, almost crying all the time. Today. Pride. It doesn't lead anywhere. It doesn't. See, let us learn from Jesus Christ. How much money do you have? He owns the universe. He owns the silver and gold. Yet, he was born in a manger. How handsome are you? How beautiful are you? This was a man without blemish. Everything was perfect. Let's calm down. God wants. Sometimes God told me, He said, Many times you pray so much from your heart for people to be helped. He said, There are some that couldn't be helped. Not because the prayer is not working, but because there are Issues to be adjusted. There are issues in people's lives to be adjusted. We learn that humility is the way of greatness. Let me round off because of time. Number six is connected to number five. How you are born is not as important as how you live. How you were born, where you were born, these things are not as important as how you live. It could be born in a manger, but it didn't die there. What you suffered. Is not as important as what you will offer. Maybe you don't know your father. There's no challenge. Born out of wedlock, no problem. Just ensure that you yourself don't give birth to other people out of wedlock. How you were born is not as important as how you live. Where you are coming from. Is not as important as where you are going. Don't focus on your history 
at the expense of your destiny. Don't focus on your history, on your past, on, on the circumstances of your beginning. At the expense of your destiny, of, at the expense of where you are going. That was number six. Don't forget it. How you are born. I that is speaking to you, I that, the one speaking to you today, I was born in the house, born on the floor, not inside the hospital. Not because I couldn't be born in the hospital, but circumstances at the time. My mother went to give birth in the hospital and they said she was not in labor. She vexed and came back home. This is pregnancy number five and you are telling me I don't know when I am in labor. And she gave birth at home on the bare floor. But I'm not on the floor now. Will never be on the floor forever by his mercies. Somebody say louder, amen. Somebody shout the loud most, amen. Where you were born, how you were born, what is happening behind you is not as important as the place you are going. And the more terrible the history, the more glorious the destiny. In case there is a history that doesn't look good. In case there is a past that doesn't look good. In case there is something behind you that does not look too good. It is a setup. For a step up. Somebody say a loud amen. Finally. It is possible. To live. As a citizen of heaven. In the world of men. That was what Jesus was. As a citizen of heaven. In the world of men. It is possible to be human. And still be godly. That was how he came to experience the human life as God. He was at all points tempted but without sin. He shared our humanity apart from the fact that he didn't share our sins. People say, how can you live in the water as fish and fish and water does not touch you? Jesus came to show that we can be in the world and not be of the world. That bribery can be taking place around you and you are not involved. That everybody is sleeping with their boss to be promoted and that is not your portion. That everybody is doing this and doing that. That it is possible to live a godly life in the earthly realm. That possibility exists. Stand up on your feet. There is a power to make that possible. There is the power to make that possible. There is the power. Everybody is cheating and cheating in exams before passing, and you say no. You see, I see a lot of uh, children having a lot of challenges these days. They do all manner of things and they get A in biology, A in physics, A in this, A in that. A. Now, there are, it's easy to get that neatly. But there are many places where they make them to get it. I was asking one child one day. He said, the result I got is not mine. I said, what happened? He said, well, we assisted to get the result. I said, so what do they normally do? He said, they give the invigilators money so that they can look away. And then the teachers and the school teachers and the students are doing their own thing. And then at the end, A1, A1, A1. The challenge of that is they are unable to go and study any course. Because when they are face to face with engineering mathematics, <laughs> differentiations and permutations and integrations <laughs> and molecular dynamics, when they are face to face with that, then they realized that the foundation for this, they didn't lay it in school. When they are 
face to face with pharmacology and pharmacodynamics and pharmacognosy and pharmaceutics and pharmacology and microbiology and, and Krebs cycle, trigracylic acid cycle. Then they, are, then they realized they didn't learn chemistry well. They didn't learn organic chemistry well. They didn't learn biology well. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, actions have consequences. They couldn't pass any foreign exam. Please do it well. It is possible to get it correctly. It is possible. It is possible to be human and be godly. It is possible to be in their midst and do the right thing. Somebody say amen. Did you receive something today? Did you receive something today? Stand up on your feet and lift up your hands and begin to give the Lord the praise. Begin to give the Lord the praise. Begin to give the Lord the honor. Begin to give the Lord the adoration. Worship him, adore him. Father, thank you. 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 We worship you. We honor you. Blessed be your name. Adoration be your name. Glory to your name. Thank you, Master. And thank you, Master. And thank you, Master. And thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name. We have heard so many things this morning. Uh, it looks like this is the longest Christmas preaching I have preached. I don't know which one we are going to pick now, but anyone that occurs to you, first of all, lift your hands and say, Father... Thank you for your word to me today. Thank you for your word to me today. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for teaching and instructing me, and instructing me on the season of Christmas. Season of Christmas. Thank you for showing me you what, was born what was born when Christ was born. Christ was born. In, the Jesus, In the name of Jesus, Father, let your personality, Father, let your personality and, your presence, and your presence and your purpose and your, purpose, and your, promise, and your promise and your power and, your power, and, possibility, and possibility and your principle and your, principle, and your provision and your, provision, and your your peace, peace. Be, real. be real in my life, in my life. At, the at the birth of Christ. Let them be real, them be real. In, my in my life. Oh Lord, oh, Lord. in the name of Jesus. Jesus, open your mouth and pray. <laughs> open your mouth and pray. <laughs> Jesus. 
Lift your hands and lift your voice after me and say, Father, Father I've come before you today. In the name of Jesus, I ask that the lessons from the birth of the Christ will be realized in my life. In the name of Jesus, Father, I believe your plan for my life must come to pass, no matter how long it takes. Father, I believe that your love will cost me to overcome every obstacle, be it human or demonic, in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask that you will use everything at your disposal to accomplish your purpose and your plan for my life, in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, help me, Lord, to have the heart of a giver, to live my life at the highest level by giving, in the name of Jesus. Father, help me, Lord, to embrace the life of humility for true greatness and authority in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, help me, Lord, to focus on the future and not on the past in the name of Jesus. And say, Father, help me, Lord, to live as a citizen of heaven on the earth. Help me to live a godly life as a human being. In the name of Jesus, deliver me from the corruption of my age, of my generation. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray as to God. Let us 